It's been a race season like no other. The NASCAR Pinty Series has consistently entertained, from short tracks to the airport tarmac at ICAR. Now, Canada's racing series tangles with one of the most challenging road circuits in the world. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is one of the biggest, baddest, most technical circuits ever constructed. And today, Canada's fiercest and fastest stock car racers come home to race a track that they fear a little, but respect a lot. The race to call oneself a NASCAR champion is in full swing. Welcome to NASCAR Racing on TSN. This is the fifth of 11 races on the NASCAR Pinty Series calendar. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park plays host to the Olamel Grand Prix of Ontario. Hello and welcome to Canada's Home for Motorsport. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is trackside. Adam, 60 years ago, this 10-turn circuit, which measures 3.9 kilometers in length, then known as Mosport, open for business. Dave, a lot of tracks have come and gone in that time, but this gem in the hills of the region of Clarington remains. It's had its share of up and downs, but the layout over 60 years really hasn't changed. It really is a gem. You have the technical turns like turn two, of course, turn five, Moss Corner, one of the most famous corners in Canadian motorsport that shoots you way down that long Mario Andretti straight. It's just a cool place to come and race. NASCAR has had its history of wild finishes. That final turn, 90 degrees to the right, turn number 10. It's had some amazing moments over the history of this place. And when you look at some of the dominant drivers here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the name Kevin Lacroix definitely has to come up. A five-time winner at this track. Of course, he won the last time out at Sir Cree Icar, showing he's a master of the rain, winning and changing conditions there. And coming out of Sir Cree Icar, Alex Tagliani took the points lead. You know, we've always known Kevin can win a lot of races, but it's consistency that's going to win championship. Tagliani and he won a GP3R, but he's backed that up with a lot of steady, solid runs. It's a different story here today, though. 30 laps means it's a sprint race. No pit stops, no strategies. It's going to be flat out right from the drop of the green flag. And with more on today, let's send it down. Say hello to Todd Lewis. Todd? That's right, guys. 30 laps today, 115 kilometers, and that means it is go time right from the start. That began in qualifying with the 59 of Gary Clute, who blasted the old track record. He whipped around CTMP in a 122 flat, the fourth pole of his career, his third here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Also fast along the front row, the 47 of LP Dumoulin, a three-time winner here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He, too, has a very fast race car. 24 NASCAR Pinty Series drivers buckled in and ready for the command. When we return, we'll go green right here on TSN. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. And now it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Let's go trackside. Drivers, start your engine. Engines fire here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The field lined up along pit lane. We'll have a number of great onboard shots to bring you all of the action here today. Good look out of the front window of Ray Cordemos Jr. Yeah, David Thorndike as well in the 67. We saw TJ Renamato in the two machine. So we're going to see everything that happens. They are a little bit deep in the field, Dave. Let's have a look at the E3 spark plug starting grid. As Todd mentioned, Gary Clute will start on pole alongside LP Dumoulin. Andrew Ranger in the 51. Kevin Lacroix in the 74 side-by-side -side row two. Row three, it's Alex Tagliani in the 18. The 22 of Marc-Antoine Cameron. Row four, we get to Ontario. Matthew Skinnell in the 99. Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. And we look back to row number five. That's where we find DJ Cannington in the 17. Kyle Marcelli making his second start in the Pinty Series. Peter Clute is in the 42 today. Brett Taylor drives the three. That's row six. Starting 13th is Malcolm Strawn in the 56. The 52 of Alex Gannett. 
Dexter Stacy drives the 92, Mark Dilly in the 64. Looking back to row number nine, that's where you find J.F. LaBerge in the 80, Larry Jackson in the number 84 in a Dodge, and then Jocelyn Fecto in the 77, Ray Cordemos Jr. in the 8. Row number 11, it's David Thorndike in the 67, Brent Weller in the 61, and rounding out the field, T.J. Renamato in the 2, and Sam Fellows in the 98. Fellows had some issues in practice and qualifying. The team feels that they have those solved for this race here today. His goal just to make some laps. You know, and if I'm Sam Fellows, if you would have started 18th, 17th in qualifying, I think you might be safe for 24th. The E3 spark plug race analysis. As we mentioned, it is a sprint race, just 30 laps, no pit stops scheduled, and a beautiful day for a motor car race, 22 degrees and clear. Dave, this is historic. 30 laps, the first sprint race we have ever held here at CTMP. And before we send it to green, let's head down trackside and check in with Todd Lewis one more time for an update before we see the green flag. Todd? A few cars to keep an eye on just before we go green, fellas. The 64 of Mark Dilley had a problem with a cracked oil pan. They have made repairs, but he will fall to the back of the field for the start of this race. Also keep an eye on row four. It is the Young Guns. The 99 of Matthew Scannell had a sensational finish a week ago at ICAR. And Trayton Lapsovich with another strong qualifying effort. He's leaving right after this race to run an APC 100 lapper. And then, of course, he'll be back to run the 51 laps on Sunday afternoon. Trayton Lapsovich is going to earn the nickname the Frequent Flyer because he's often bouncing back and forth between different racetracks and different race series, but doing well in all of them. Doing a great job, but right now it's about Gary Clouton, this 59. The only race he's run all year. This is his first time out. Do you have any nerves at this point? I don't think so. He's pretty cool. He's a previous winner here, the Smiling Assassin. Turn 10, now onto the front straightaway. Look at the field, bunch up, and they're starting to nudge already as finally Gary Clute jumps on the loud pedal and sets them free into turn number one. Amazing composure. Andrew Ranger giving him some bumper encouragement. Even that didn't make him launch before he wanted to. Love this rush down into turn number two. Over the crest of Blind Apex, Ock Camber. We talked about this being a sprint race, Dave. In every race we've ever run here, it has been 51 laps. We're long enough to require a pit stop. That's why this is a sprint. They've always run the first 10 laps just to get track position, get comfortable. Now every corner matters. You don't want to give up a spot because you can't make it up on pit road. You really won't have to start thinking about saving your tires or saving your brakes, things like that. It's all out right from the drop of the green. Gary Klute seems fine with that so far as he pulls away down the back straightaway. This long uphill around the bend downhill into turn number eight. Sounds of speed down the Andretti straightaway. Here we go into the right-hander turn number eight. That used to be a great passing opportunity. These cars stick so well now that it's really just a momentum corner. You try and keep it up into turn number nine and set up your passes. Nine and 10 are good passing opportunities. Yeah, the exit of turn nine into turn 10. Down here in turn number one, you'll see a little bit. The big opportunity still turn three, turn five. Good look at Kevin Lacroix on the bumper to bumper Dodge in his office and now out his windshield. Just dip those left side tires off the inside of the racetrack there in turn two, down into turn three. You hit those rumble strips towards the inside, then let the car drift. And it looks like a drift, but they're really, it, it's just controlled power. That's the way you want these cars to work. You want them to skate across the surface just a little bit. There's a great dice between the seven of Kyle Marcelli and the Simcoe Building Centers. Ford Fusion and the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Kennington is having a, a quietly solid season here in 2021. Yeah, he really is. Steady results. And I mean, that's one way to win a championship. The other way he's won a championship is by winning five races in a row in the middle of the season. <laughs> Different ways to get to the same spot. There you can see those drivers skating it off turn number eight, headed towards turn nine. Kevin Lacroix took a quick peek down that back straightaway on the 51, and have a look at the smoke coming from the back 
of the Andrew Ranger Rick Ware racing machine. So we'll keep an eye on that. As smoke starting to show on board with Ranger. The car sounds fine. Andrew seems to be driving as though all systems go. But we'll keep our eyes on that for sure. And no fluid on the windscreen of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, who's right in the wake of that Dodge Challenger of Andrew Ranger. While well, Andrew Ranger sees no problem with what the car is doing, NASCAR will have its eye on it. Todd's pit side. Let's find out from crew chief Rick Verburn. You've talked to your driver. Do you know what that smoke is? We're not too sure right now. He's, he's not complaining of anything as far as the car making any noises or leaking anything. All the gauges are fine, so we'll just keep going and see what happens here. Fingers crossed here in the 51 pit. Have a look at that shot, though. You can see the smoke coming into the driver's compartment, so Andrew Ranger will be aware that there is some sort of problem, so he'll be watching his gauges. That's the start of a Cheech and Chong movie right there <laughs> in the 51 machine. As we're talking about the 51, the 47 WeatherTech Dodge Hill closing the gap on your race leader as L.P. Dumoulin former race winner here as well, is now starting to flex his muscle. Now, just there I swore I saw smoke come out the front wheel well of that 51 machine. Seems to be worse under braking. And especially in these right-hand turns, when he goes left watching turn number two, it doesn't seem to be as, as solid out the back. Kevin Lacroix wheeling that number 74. He doesn't seem bothered to run directly behind Andrew Ranger, so you would think if there was fluid coming out, Lacroix would be looking for a plan B, right? Not running in his tire tracks. Absolutely. He would be the first man on scene in the event something goes terribly wrong with the 51. So, like you say, he's quite comfortable just sitting in behind Andrew Ranger right now as everybody in this field sits behind the number 59 of Gary Clute. He's led since the drop of the green here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back to the Olimel Grand Prix of Ontario at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We talked about no fluid on the windscreen of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Have a look now. And, and remember how I said it's hard to describe how fluid looks when it gets onto the windshield because it scatters so quickly, but that's exactly what it looks like as little streaks straight up the windshield. Kevin Lacroix is not going to wait too long to hang out behind that 51 as he ducks to the inside in turn number 10, so move the 74 up to third spot. Something hanging off the left door there of Ranger's car, which is a whole lot of nothing, but the things you notice on these cameras are unbelievable, the detail that we get to see. This has to be attention-grabbing for the driver, Andrew Ranger, as he's trying to pedal this car, steer it around a very technical circuit, and the cabin is filling with smoke, so he's wondering what's up. Now, fortunately, I think most of these drivers run a fresh air system in their helmet, so they isolate the air inside their helmet with something around their neck low fresh air and they're otherwise yeah that the stink would be a big concern leaders into lap traffic as brent weller in the 61 great looking new livery on that 61 car pulls to the outside lets the quicker cars go past there's a lot of learning here to do for brent weller doing a great job so far here's drivers who have already done a lot of learning they are the best of the best we're on board with the trail con leasing dodge of gary clute we talked about Clute maybe being rusty, not having a lot of laps in a NASCAR Pinty Series car, not actually entering any event so far in 2021. This track is his backyard. He loves this place. He's won here in the past. He's run a NASCAR Truck Series race here in the past. So it was really no surprise to see the number 59 on track here today. And his father, Peter Clute, in the number 42 as well. And they've tested here a couple of times this year. And his crew chief is John Fletcher. You, you add everything together. No big surprise that Gary Clute's pretty darn good here. How about your points leader there? You see Alex Tank Liani not too far down the running order, currently sitting in fifth. So he's just quietly holding that position, not being threatened from behind. 
and not quite up to that smoking number 51 of Andrew Ranger just yet. We're almost a third of the way through this race. Alex Tagliani has to feel great about where he is. He sees the leader. It's taken them eight laps. Whoa, trouble. That's Brent Weller, the rigid number 61 on the outside of turn number three. Weller in the rigid number 61 caught the grass but not the wall. That's good news for him as he's able to refire and get back moving. Just a local caution in that corner, so we avoid a full course caution in this race, which is great news for your leader, Gary Kloot. But look, battle for second heating up now. Yeah, Kevin Lacroix just a lap or two ago getting around Andrew Ranger, and he has closed the gap on our top two. Kind of missed turn number nine there, takes a big wide swing at it. Or did he? He would maybe try to get a run on the outside of turn nine, carry that momentum into a passing zone of turn 10. So might have been by design. Could be. Normally what you'll see them do is shadow the car in front of them through nine and then swing out on exit, not so much in the middle, but you could be absolutely right. Kevin McCaw knows his way around this track, as we mentioned off the top of the show, five times a race winner. If he wins here today, he will be the winningest NASCAR Pinty Series driver here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, currently tied on wins with, with J.R. Fitzpatrick. With JR there. I was going to pose this as a trivia question, I figured I'd just do Ah, he was so good here for so many years. And I keep watching, Lacroix went wide in a few corners there, so I'm not sure what he's cooking up in that bumper-to-bumper -bumper machine. Remember, he's got a little bit of fluid on his window after following the 51 of Andrew Ranger for several laps, but Ranger now has sucked up to the back end of the 74, so the problems on that car making it smoke, not making it slow down at all. I know the speed is still there for sure. After iCar, Ranger was complaining a little bit that he felt short on horsepower. He felt like the other cars were picking up a couple of car lengths on straightaways. He is not short on horsepower here. Top four now all squished together at the front of the field, all behind the number 59 of Gary Kluke. LP Dumoulin holding down second spot in the WeatherTech Dodge. Dumoulin comes into this one second in points. Kevin Lacroix in the 74, holding down third. Then there he is, the purple and yellow number 51 of Andrew Ranger. Now, we are hearing reports that NAS NASCAR's talking about that 51 car monitoring the smoke, which is something that they would obviously do anyhow. But when they start talking about it, that's when you start to look for the black flag to be displayed. Talked about the 18 of Alex Tagliani, your points leader, coming into this one. Now he has a rearview mirror filled with the GM Pie number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. And that's Chevy Camaro. I love the center section of Cameron's car, that throwback Scott Steckley number 22 look. Of course, we mention this every road race. <laughs> the 22 is still looking to make its first trip to victory lane in the NASCAR Pinty Series. How about the hard luck this year for Mark Antoine Cameron? So fast at the Grand Prix of 20 Vier. Mechanical malfunction, he had a break DNF. At ICAR, mechanical malfunction, had a break DNF. So he's dropped out of races that he was right there to contend for wins. And you could see the dejection as here goes Kevin Lacroix to the inside in turn number 10. L.P. Dumoulin doing a great job keeping him down to the inside where he couldn't get the power down. And that's really the only way to defend in turn 10 is you have to crowd them down to the inside, make them run that curving, and sometimes it takes a little rubbing. Now you use your number. Your, your driver's door, your passenger doors, we see a battle for the eighth spot out here on the racetrack. Creighton Laksevich, Matthew Scannell, Kyle Marcelli. So seventh, eighth, and ninth. That's right, Laksevich having a, a very good run. Again, this would be the first time he's seen Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in race action in that 20. But we know from previous road and street circuits that, you know what, give him a race car and he's going to go fast. This was always his father's favorite racetrack, so if there's anywhere he's getting some good advice, it'll be from his father, Jeff Lapsley. And did you hear that? The 74 goes around. Kevin Lacroix in turn number five, a spin from second place in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge. Oh, no. Kevin Lacroix, well, whatever it is, is terminal. He is taking off his safety gear. Yeah, that was more than a spin. We didn't see if there was any contact between him and any other cars, but the 74 sits stopped 
on the outside of turn number five, and if he doesn't move, this will draw, and there it is, a full course caution. Yellow flag is out. You see the leaders just going by David Thorndike, so he will get to go around the leaders and get back to the tail of the lead lap. But what an unfortunate set of circumstances for Kevin Lacroix. Have another look at what happened into turn five. Locking, uh, locking up the rear end? It sounded very much like locking up something in the drivetrain went south and went south in a hurry. On board with Andrew Ranger. Yeah, wow. Look, it something, almost looks like somebody pulled the handbrake on him. Yeah, something locked up in Ranger's drivetrain as well. It sounds like a wheel hop, but he's way too far in the braking zone for that to actually happen. So something broke, Todd. Don Thompson, the crew chief for the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. You have had a lot of success at this racetrack, but not today. What the problem put you out? Yeah, it looks like we broke the transmission, Todd. Tough way to exit this one. You guys were in a real points fight. You know it is, but uh, we'll rebound from this. That's what we're like. Thanks, Todd. Okay. They will for sure, as Todd mentioned, in a points fight, he won the last time out at Circuit Icar. Won't see victory lane here today, though. Welcome back to the historic Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the Olamel Grand Prix of Ontario. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis's trackside. There is Kevin Lacroix out of the car as the cleanup continues. Unfortunately, transmission troubles on the 74 today. It's such a mature Kevin Lacroix we see anymore. I mean, I'm sure his buttons could be pushed to the point, but a couple of years ago, I think he would have been more visibly frustrated. On board TJ Rinomato in the number two, and he will be the free pass car. So when they release these drivers, what they do is they line them up two by two down the Andretti straight away, and that's when the two will be released. So he doesn't quite get back around to rejoin the tail of the field by the time we go back to green. You make back about half of a lap, and Andrew Ranger looks to be veering off into the pits. So the 51 of Ranger down pit road, I believe he was being black flagged the last couple of laps, which means you've got to report to the pits. Good time to do it for Andrew Ranger. It's a field under caution, so he'll make sure to hit that pit road speed limit. His stall is way down at the end here, Todd. The 51 of Andrew Ranger finally answers the black flag penalty. The crew is unbuckling the hood. They're going to have a look to see if they can source where that oil and smoke is coming from. NASCAR officials also helping to try to determine what exactly that problem is. They put the hood pins back in. They're now looking at the rear of the car, trying to determine where that problem is on the 51. And that's not just any NASCAR official, that's Sam Putnam, probably the most experienced official on both sides of the wall. He's been a crew member, he's been an official, he had a good look under that car, and the fact that he's not standing in front of it telling them they've got something to fix tells me he's satisfied that the 51 can go back on the racetrack. What's interesting too is the smoke stopped when the 51 was stopped along pit road as you see a couple other drivers, Brent Weller in the 61 and the 56 of Malcolm Strawn also down pit lane put up on the 56. I love that simple paint scheme Malcolm Strawn is running, that R club number 56. As we have a look at the trail con leasing 59 of Gary Clute, he has had his way through the entire first third of this race. We are nearly halfway through the Ollie Mel Grand Prix of Ontario. We'll be back with the rest on TSN. The field lined up two by two as we get set to go back to green here in race number five of 11 scheduled here in the 2021 season for the NASCAR PT Series on TSN, riding along board the number eight of Ray Cordemosh Jr. A lot of cars ahead of him, but I'll tell you, Ray Cordemont and David Thorndike, they've got all the fenders on these cars. They're doing what they need to do and hopefully having a good time doing it. Now you can see the field slow again. Gary Clute brought them down very slowly for the initial start. He's doing the same thing for this restart as they bunch up a little bit of accordion action as the green flag waves once again. You know, everybody tries to anticipate when the leader's gonna go. If the leader doesn't change his speed, all the problems further back come from the middle of the pack. 
and it all benefits the race leader. Tagliani, though, great start in the Rona Viagra, number 18, into third spot. And how about that RGC number 20, a trait in Lapsovich. He's up here battling in the top five. On board the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron sitting in fourth spot. You can hear them sail in turn number four as again one of those blind apex down a hill corner and you really don't understand how steep that hill is until you're behind the wheel of a race car. You aren't kidding, Dave. That is a wild corner as we look at Kyle Marcelli holding off Matthews Canell in the 99. Both these drivers having a pretty good run, although there could be a problem. Marcelli is off the pace on the backstretch. Marcelli, who broke at Grand Prix to 20, Vierro running well inside the top 10. Trouble again on the Dave Jacobs prepared number seven. So he is off the pace on the Andretti straightaway. There you see the RGC number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich right in the shadow now of the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Yeah, the top two have opened up about 12 car lengths over Alex Tagliani running in the third spot. On board LP Dumoulin's, you see the seven of Kyle Marcelli from Barry, Ontario now finds Pitt Lane to try and get problems fixed, but another driver who's out is standing by with Todd. Todd. Kevin Lacroix has made it back to pit lane. This is a tough break and a tough blow here today. Yeah, well, again, a mechanical issue. It's like a second time this year, so it's a bit frustrating. I think we had the, the best car out there. I was uh, feeling like I was uh, catching up on the leaders, and uh, I was just trying to save my stuff and wait for the uh, opportunity. And So I was feeling very confident uh, about the win, but, uh, you know, we have a second chance tomorrow, and we'll see. But uh, at least uh, we can repair, and you know the car is. We know it, it's fast, so try to get a shot at the win tomorrow. Thanks, Kevin. And Kevin has been fast at nearly every stop of the season so far in 2021. As we have a draft down the Andretti straightaway here, the 47 of LP Dumoulin tucked in behind the 59 of Gary Clute. Took a peek in turn number eight, but decides better of it. Man, you watch Clute turn into number eight. That car looks, I mean, he's in perfect control, but that, that turn into number eight, if anything were to go wrong. What I'm trying to say, Dave, it's a fast, fast corner. <laughs> it is a very fast corner. Watch the hands working from LP Dumoulin. And look at the battle for third place as well. It's a three-car tussle between Alex Tagliani, Mark Antoine Cameron, and the young gun Trayton Lapsovich, who is vying for 2021 Rookie of the Year honors. Lapsovich is just so impressive. These are two of the best road racing drivers in the world. Mark Antoine Cameron and Alex Tagliani. And here's Trayton Lapsovich who's going into his senior year in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and as we mentioned that, Mark Antoine Cameron goes through taking third spot from Alex Tagliani. That looked like maybe Alex Tagliani was like thinking a little bit longer run. I'm going to open this door and let the 22 through and I'll follow you for a little bit. And that could be. How about Matthew Scannell driving in Larry Jackson's car, the O'Neill Electric Supply, my box sponsored number 99, Larry Jackson, the team owner. And you remember the run that he had in the Dave Jacobs number seven at Sir Free Icar the last time out inside the top ten all afternoon. It's on board Andrew Ranger and we're still watching that smoke coming from the number 51. And watching him come back through this field in a big hurry. So it's still smoking and it's still fast. You see the TCB trailers, Fast Eddie Speedwear, number three of uh, Brett Taylor, having a good run here on the road course at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, just ahead of Peter Clute, the legendary motor car number 42. The thing about smoke and steam from a race car is it usually doesn't last this long. Whatever, and something has to exit the race car that's not supposed to be <laughs> exiting in order for it to make smoke or steam. And, and usually once it does that, something seizes or blows up. You can usually count on about 10 laps. It's been about 20 now for the 51 of Andrew Ranger with just 10 laps to go in this 30 lap sprint race. 
this is exciting. I mean, no pit stops, no strategy. It's just been all go. We expected a good hard tussle at the front of the field, and that's exactly what we've been getting. That's exactly what we're getting. And the top two of finally, this is the biggest lead we've seen anyone have, although there's two of them that haven't. Right, like Clute hasn't been able to get away. With Dumoulin, they've driven away from the third place car, but uh, man, oh man, there's a lot of competitive race cars here this afternoon. Ranger is now back up inside the top 10 as the leaders come into lap traffic. TJ Renamato in the RGC group number two pulls to the outside. Both leaders get through in turn number 10. Oh. And trouble on the two. Renamato's having some transmission issues of his own. Yeah, some sort of problem there. Was that what that was, him trying to fight the car into a gear? It sounded like it. He was searching for something in that transmission. He's in a bad spot. Like, just past the entrance to pit road. He's got 10 turns to navigate a long back straightaway to try to get back to the pit entrance. Here goes Lapsovich to the inside of Tagliani. Tagliani says, no, thank you, not right now. You see, that's why I suspected he let the 22 go through earlier because that time Tagliani held a little bit more of a defensive line going into turn number three. He knew the 20 was there. But as they fight, the 99 of Matthew Skinnell is catching them. It doesn't take much for these leaders and these other cars to start closing in on the battles in front of them as soon as drivers start going side by side. No, oh, you're absolutely right. Look at this run Dumoulin has up the back straightaway. Heading towards turn number eight to driver's right. L.P. Dumoulin takes the lead. What a run down the straightaway. He's clear of the 59 into turn number eight, but look at the lean on the 59 of Clute. As he leans through, now look at turn number nine. The car is flopping back and forth. It wasn't doing that before. That looks to me, Dave, that's a broken sway bar. He's doing it in both corners. Something on the sway bar is let go. A mount. The sway bar holds that front end together and really keeps the front of the car stable. It's mounted on, on each side of the chassis. It goes straight across the car and sort of equals the pressure. So if you push down hard on one side, it keeps the other side at the same level, and that is not doing the job. You can see the lift on the right front tire as he goes into turn number three, and there's Rina Mato off the side of the course. And that's not a good place to stop. He is still in the live action area of the racetrack. He's off in the grass, but still on the exit of the corner, and that's going to draw a full course caution. Wow. Clute's car rolling off over hard enough. He looks like a dirt modified on a tacky dirt track. The yeah. way it's lifting the inside wheel every time he tries to turn left or right. So big problems there as we'll have a look at what happened finally to the number two. Now you can hear him trying to grab different gears and there's, there's nothing there to be grabbed. There he sits, off in turn number three, awaiting a push back to mid lane. We're under caution here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Well, TJ Rinomato's day is done, and during the caution, we heard Tagliani on his radio mention something big and shiny that hit his windshield, took out part of his roof. We believe that something has come off the 59 car just before he lost the lead. Well, Dave, we saw that Gary was struggling to control the car. Let's have a ride with L.P. Dumoulin. So you could hear something thump the car. There it goes. What, what on earth? It was something so big and shiny. The, but then it the went... The sway bar mount, possibly, that went back and hit Tagliani's car. That would be significant, because through the grill of the 47, back out the back end of that car, and into the front of Tagliani, because it obviously hit the 18 car as well. Back to green now. I feel bad for Tagliani. He's got a restart right behind Gary Clute, who had all those problems. They go back to the last completed lap. Clute restarts second. That's a big handicap for Tagliani, because his car is not handling very well. No, with losing a sway bar mount or problems with the sway bar, as we mentioned, that's going to really affect handling, isn't it? Well, we talked about this during the commercial. If you've ever towed a heavy trailer, you might put anti-sway bars on your trailer hitch. That's exactly what a sway bar does across the front of the car. It just stabilizes it, and you can see Gary Clute's car extremely unstable. Yeah, it's flipping and flopping, especially turn through or through turn five 
five A and B, and there he can see Dexter Stacy, the Bullies truck stop number 92, in a battle there with the 51 of Andrew Ranger. So Ranger using that caution flag period, now back up inside the top 10 and ready to fight some more. Five laps to go, Andrew Ranger approaching the front, LP Dumoulin pulling away from Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. Good look at Matthew Skinnell in the number 99. Tucked in behind and goes a little bit wide. Looks like he just missed his breaking point in turn number nine. That's going to cost him at least one spot. Now two as Ranger will slip by. Yeah, DJ Kennington got around. Andrew Ranger going by on the inside down into turn number one. Good news for Ranger. Looks like the smoke has cleared up inside the cockpit. As we said, the smoke won't last forever. <laughs> Into lap traffic now are the race leaders. There is Malcolm Strawn in the R Club, number 56. A car owned by Jim Gray pulls to the outside, lets the leaders go through. And now the fast Eddie Speedwear, number three of Brett Taylor, is all over the 99 of Matthews Canal. Solid run by Brett Taylor to be that close to the front on a technical road course like this is Kerry Clute and Malcolm Strawn both smoking a little down into turn number five. Not as much as Andrew Ranger. <laughs> Ranger continues to dust this entire motorsport park for mosquitoes. Make sure there's none left here because he's putting up a pretty good smoke screen this entire race. Have a listen. Anything amiss? He looks cool as a cucumber. The car is running fast down the backstretch. Kennington to the inside of Malcolm Strawn through turn eight. Ooh, Strawn way out in the marbles and goes for a little bit of slide in turn number eight, but the 51 of Ranger will slip through. That's going to pose a problem, though, for Dexter Stacy. You can see he just gets boxed in behind the lap car. Just a little bit of a slowdown for Dexter Stacy, but that's all it takes for Ranger to pick up an extra two or three car lengths. I'm going to shout out to Sam Fellow up here racing with the pack of lead lap cars a solid run for Fellows. Sitting in 15th position right now in the curb records number 98 and again we mentioned off the top of the show his main goal here today a track that he has a little bit of knowledge this is one of the first tracks that he's been at in the Pinty series where he's been here before but it's just get laps get comfortable and pick up speed. Wow through turn four you see the sparks flying that could be the frame drag in the race wreck. I'm trying to think what would spark first, but either way, Clute's doing a masterful job. He's had to adjust his driving to suit the new characteristics of that race car. Look at the roof of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. That's not a camera mount up there. That's the actual fiberglass peeled back. So for whatever came out of the 59 car, it bounced off the roof. Must have given Alex Tagliani an awful fright. You're not kidding there. And now Tagliani reported it also hit the windshield. So either two pieces hit the car or one hit the windshield and bounced up onto the roof. Still your race leader, though, is LP Dumoulin. This is a battle for third position. Clute has it. Tagliani wants it. But Clute seems to be holding up this pack just a little bit. I should say fourth position right now. Yeah, Trayton Lapsovic holding down third. Doing a great job in the RGC Sports number 20. Yeah, whatever's dragging there is not going to be. There's not going to be much left of it at the end of this race. With three laps to go, it's just now survival mode for the 59 of Gary Clute. He started on pole, something has gone amiss, but he's hanging on to a top five finish. Mark Antoine Cameron is closing the distance to LP Dumoulin. Two and a half laps remaining. There's still time to get there, but he has really got to hit his marks. See, as they work through turns 5A and B, the smoke gets heavier from the 51. He dissipates down the Andretti straightaway from Andrew Ranger. Dexter Stacy pulls out of line. Doesn't want to follow in the tire tracks of Andrew Ranger much anymore as Ranger stalks the 17 Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. We're hearing reports Andrew Ranger is going to be black flagged again. Boy, oh boy, he, they sent him, he goes to the back because he was black flagged before, drives all the way through the field. Uh, they must see something that we don't see from here. It's the same smoke that's been in the car, coming off the car 
pretty much the whole race where you see the black flag waving from Dan Hawkins in the flag stand. Tagliani is working over the 59 of Gary Clute as hard as he possibly can, but you can see the three leaders now opening up a bit of a gap on the trail gone leasing number 59. Whoa, wow. Look at that lead. Turn two must be hairy in a situation like that. And there goes Tagliani in turn three. To the inside in turn number three, a good smooth pass by Alex Tagliani puts Gary Clute back to the fifth spot. You can hear him floating the throttle down turn number four as Gary Clute struggles to maintain, maintain control. A good grouping of race cars. These are all battling for position right now. That is, un I don't remember ever seeing this here at CTMP, Dave. They always sort of separate a little bit. There are some fast cars with quality drivers here this afternoon. They're gonna see the white flag this time at the strike. Yeah, this is something we'd see in a green-white checker here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. These cars have been racing at speed after that last restart for about 10 laps. Mark Antoine Cameron trying to close in. He's got about 10 car lanes between himself and the race leader. LP has given it all he's got. You can see right up on the rumble strips at the exit of turn 10. Drayton Lapsovich floats it into turn number one in the RGC number 20, holding down third spot. There's fourth place. And your points leader coming into this event in the Rona Viagra Chevy Camaro, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Down through turn number two, the final time. This is a good passing opportunity into three. I don't think Kennington is quite close enough, but he'll get the nose of that Castro Edge Dodge right up under the 59. Have a look who will get the run. Kennington pokes the nose. Look at at the front, though, the 22 GM Pie Chevrolet of Mark Antoine Cameron has closed. He's within drafting distance down the Andretti straightaway. Tucks to the inside on the exit of turn five, and we ride on board with Mark Andron Cameron. He's pushing that pedal right through the firewall of this race car, trying for more. We talked about it in the opening, Dave. Turn 10 is the opportunity for a bump and run. He floats it through turn eight. It's a little bit crossways, trying to make it stick. Pushes into turn number nine. The 22 has a run into turn 10. Crossways goes Cameron. And to the win goes the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Mark Antoine Cameron second. Three blocks of its third. Oh my goodness, what a race. He can't say he didn't try. Wow. What a finish here at CTMP. Todd Lewis is pit side. Robin Bukleski is the winning crew chief for LP Dumoulin. Did you feel confident all day that he could take this? Well, I, I felt pretty confident. The car was so fast in uh, practice and everything. Really confident. I'm just so happy to get a win. I want to get a win every year at least, so we're so happy to get that behind us. And I think we got the points lead now, so I'm really happy. The car was great. Go celebrate and enjoy it. Thank you. Solid performance and first time in victory lane here in 2021. When we return, we'll chat with your race winner. 42-year-old LP Dumoulin is parked in victory lane as he gets ready to accept the hardware for his 11th career NASCAR victory. He's got the checkered flag. He's not even taking that helmet off yet. LP Dumala after winning here twice in 2013, a win in 2018. He has another victory at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, his fourth in his career. His crew chief, Robin McCluskey, has come down to congratulate him and embrace. Good job, boys. His wife, Sheila, and the kids, Victor and Louie, are here as well. And LP has given high fives to that entire team. And now gets a hug from wife, Sheila. Go ahead, take that helmet off. And once you do, you said earlier when we talked that you thought you had a good car, you thought you had a fast car, you got the lead, you got out in front. But how much were you looking in that rear view mirror on that last lap on the challenge? Well... <laughs> Go ahead and get the uh, whole we family. Were, we were, we were. <laughs> oh, Go with that one. We were, we were really, um, 
I think we were really good in the long run, but uh, the 22 racing car behind us, Marc Antoine, was uh, coming with a lot of speed. And we had already used a lot of car as well. I guess he did too. But uh, that weather tech Ben Morcar did a great job staying up front during the whole race. And then uh, super proud of my team because everybody worked incredibly hard this, uh, this, uh, this week, this year. But a lot of work was done in the shop this week to make it sure that we can show up with a very strong car. And I'm super proud of my team, my engine builder, everybody, my family, sponsor WeatherTech, Ben Mar, everybody, thank you so much. Let's go for more. LP Dumoulin has his first victory at 2021. How about his wife able to carry both those kids in victory lane as LP Dumoulin celebrates the win here in the Olamel Grand Prix of Ontario. Gary Clute hangs on for a fifth place finish. His father, Peter Clute, in the top 10 as well. Disappointing day for some of these drivers. Andrew Ranger gets a 60 second penalty to finish 19th. Mark Antoine Cameron has had such tough luck this year. Now the kind of performance you're expecting out of that 22 car. Yes, finally, we got a good result. The GM Payet was really fast uh, during the race. Not quite good on qualify, but we know the car was good for a long run. So, I, uh, you know, I was behind LP. Wasn't in one more lap. Uh, he protected a little bit on the inside, you know, which is, was all right uh, on corner nine, uh, 10. Uh, I respect him. So uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll get the win tomorrow. Big smile from Marc Antoine Cameron. Halfway through this 2021 season, we've already had three different point leaders. LP Duma with a slim three point edge over Tagliani. Trayton Lapsovich, third, 21 markers back. Best ever finish on a rotor street course for Trayton Lapsovich. You were having some kind of rookie year. That was, that was a lot of fun there. Um, I've gained a lot of experience on the road courses with iCar and GP3R there. Uh, I've had a lot of people that have uh, given me a lot of great advice. So I'm very thankful for that. And, and we're, like you said, we're having a great year so far. Congratulations. Thank you. Good, hard, clean racing here today on the doubleheader weekend at CTMP. This NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by QuickWick, the world's number one fire starter by Watson Building Supplies, Ontario's premier distributor of construction materials. By Markdom International, world-class injection molded products. And by IHL, from start to finish. Dave, we get to come back and do it all over again in the next round, right here at CTMP. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.